Hello, church family. Thank you for joining me for Thinking Through the Word. I want us today to look at Solomon's prayer for wisdom in 1 Kings chapter 3. Now, a few weeks ago, in the introduction to our study in the book of Proverbs, we made our way through this passage, at least broadly. Uh, Today, I want to zoom in a little bit and glean some of the truth that's here for us. We're trying to figure out how Solomon made such a wise choice. How then can we make wise choices? What should we be considering in order to choose wisely? Um, Before we get to that prayer, I want us to look at the first four verses of narrative, uh, because in those four verses, we catch a glimpse of Solomon's blind spots. And we learn something of our own sanctification. So, in verse 1, Solomon made a marriage alliance. There's blind spot number one. Uh, Women, marriages, wives, concubines. Uh, This was a trouble spot for Solomon. Not only women, but... In the next couple of verses here, we see that the people were sacrificing at the high places. Well, see it again. Verse three, that's where Solomon went. This is blind spot number two. A a lack of caution. Uh, there's There's a little bit of casualness to the approach of where... Study Deuteronomy chapter 12, and it seems to be a little more succinct. And even when we get to the end of our chapter in verse 15, we see that Solomon comes to Jerusalem and stands before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. So these high places, though it's a little foggy because the house had not been built yet for the Lord, it still points us forward to... uh, 1 Kings 11, and we see in summary the end of Solomon uh, and his effectiveness because of women and because of idolatry. Uh, There again, these things can serve us with a warning uh, about being too casual regarding fidelity in marriage and also purity in our relationships, treating those of the opposite sex as brothers, as sisters in Christ. That's important, as is a warning about casual approach to worship and to theology. Truth matters and error is significant, and so we cannot give place to the devil when it comes to purity of uh, both body and and worship. All right, let's let's look more specifically at this prayer of Solomon. The Lord appears to Solomon and says, "Ask what I shall give you." And we begin to see some things here that are helpful to us. Oh, you know, I never I never touched on that matter of sanctification. Verse three, in the midst of being concerned about the high places in the midst of the warning about marriage, we see this principle. Verse 3, Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Okay, we've just been shown that he probably shouldn't have married there. He probably shouldn't have worshipped at this place. But then we're told that Solomon loved the Lord and walked in the statutes of David his father. I think the lesson for our sanctification here is this. As you confront someone or deal with their sinful failures, shortcomings, blind spots, don't forget the fact that they may indeed love the Lord. On the flip side of that, if someone approaches you regarding something they're concerned about, regarding what we could call a blind spot, you're not seeing this. Don't assume that they think the worst. Uh, Know that you can love the Lord and still be growing, walking uh, in your sanctification. 
All right. So file that away. It, it's worthy of noting that phrase in the midst of those foreshadowings of Solomon's downfall. Now back to verse 6. I want us to see a couple of thoughts here about making a wise choice. First of all, Solomon says, You, speaking of God, have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, David, my father. He's looking back. He's, he's seeing God's faithfulness through the years. Great and steadfast love is what characterized God's actions and attitude toward David, toward the people of Israel. And I think anytime we're trying to make a wise choice, we should consider the goodness of God. Look back and see how God has been faithful, and this can help us to avoid bad choices and foolishness as we choose moving forward. Don't fail to remember God's goodness. You have shown great and steadfast love. Verse 7, And now, O Lord God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. This is a matter of humility. It recognizes our insufficiency. Humility and insufficiency. It's good to consider the goodness of God. It's also good to consider the insufficiency of self. You'll falter from wisdom. You'll stumble into bad choices if you fail to remember that your tendency is towards self-reliance. Oftentimes, we hear little children say those words, I can do it. I can do it. I can tie my own shoes. I can reach the cupboard. I can do it. I think this text through Solomon's words is warning us about that I can do it mentality. David's saying, I can't do it. I do not know. So recognize your insufficiency, even as you've already recognized God's goodness, his steadfast love. This is steering us towards right choices. Your servant is in the midst of your people. Your servant is in the midst of your people. If you want to make good choices, remember God's goodness. Remember your own insufficiency. Remember your responsibility to others. You do not live your life in an, on an island. Rather, you, you exist in all of these relationships, some stronger than others. But you are in the midst of a people. So draw a circle on a piece of paper and put your name in there. So there's me. And then start connecting to all the relationships. There's marriage. There's the children, there's all the relationships in family, in church, in work, in school for some of you. Make all those connections and realize this. As you approach making choices, you're thinking of how God's always faithful. You're thinking of your insufficiency and proneness to self-reliance. And now you're thinking that God has placed you in the midst of a people for a reason. Choose wisely. Consider your responsibility to others. Then we come to verse 9. And here Solomon say, Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people. This kind of connects it all together. Therefore, because of everything that's come before, because God's been faithful, because I'm insufficient for the task, because I have a responsibility to others, God, give me an understanding mind. But even in asking for that, we're asked to remember that we have the privilege and the opportunity to ask for wisdom. 
God gives wisdom. Proverbs 2, in the in the daily pursuit of it through the word, we'll find wisdom. And in James 1, in the crisis of trial and emergency, he gives us wisdom. Recognize your opportunity to ask, Lord, give wisdom. Give an understanding mind so that, or in order to, do God's will. That you may discern between good and evil. There is a biblical prayer. Consider your opportunity to ask and ask. So as we're trying to figure out how to make wise choices, we can see something of a how-to from the life of Solomon. Consider the goodness of God. Consider the insufficiency of self. Consider the, the responsibility that we have to others. And consider the privilege of asking. And then ask. Pray and ask for an understanding mind. Pray and ask for wisdom. And what we see is that when God answers this prayer, which he does for Solomon and which he will do for us, oh, it didn't make it onto my page. Verse 15, he came to Jerusalem, stood before the Ark of the Covenant, offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. He worshiped. Having sought wisdom, having received wisdom, he worshiped. It's, again, just the natural response to knowing God, and in this case, knowing the God of wisdom. Uh, He's drawn into a closer fellowship with the Lord. So in this chapter, 1 Corinthians 3, we're looking at a king of peace who's seeking to do his father's will, build the temple that his father wanted to build. And he becomes the wisest king the world has ever known. Well, we look forward to another king of peace doing the will of his father who would become, for all of us who believe, the wisdom of God. So be careful as you choose today. Let Solomon's considerations guide your choosing so that we can be wise. That's thinking through the word, 1 Kings chapter 3. Grace and peace to you.